Hi everyone, I'm Jessica, how are you? Welcome back to my channel. Today in my sewing space, I'm working on quilting the Scrappy Stars quilt and making progress on the Flying Geese quilt. So let's get started. So today I just laid out all the geese I have made. I ended up needing 12 more, so I did three, four at a time groups and it finished this other row. Now I'm not exactly sure on this size yet because they're roughly laid out and they're not sewn together. I was thinking, I'm thinking this could probably be a large baby quilt or a small lap quilt. And I have it laid out like this, but I think I'm gonna try flipping this row and this row and this row just to see what it looks like if those geese are pointed in a different direction. And here's what that looks like with those rows flipped. I think I like this. I think I'm going to go with this and start assembling. And then once I have it assembled, I'll see if it's a good size. Um, I'm definitely gonna add borders. I was going to use, I'm planning to use this white right here as a border, and I'm thinking kind of like a thick border. So four or five inches. So I'm gonna start assembling these and then go from there. I'm gonna start assembling the flying geese quilt. So here's what I did. I took the first row and stacked it and the second row and stacked it. And I'm just gonna put them underneath and then I will just lay one on top of the other like this. And then I'm just going to take the next one and I'll just continue on all the way down just sewing one to another so far i've sewn three rows together it looks like this and i just finished the third row so i'm just gonna pull this all back and add the fourth which i have right here below and i just take one at a time and again i just match these sides and start sewing I was going to mix the geese up and um, make it random, but I started by laying them all out uh, in the order that I had. And I liked how they looked, uh, four of the same ones in a row. I thought that looked nice, so I just decided to just keep it. That was pretty simple. I was happy with how it looked and um, I didn't have to do any, you know, moving around with the exception of flipping those alternate rows like I showed before. But I think since I had, I have no expectations on this quilt. I just wanted to make the four at a time flying geese uh, to practice making the flying geese. Like that's all, just the skill. And because of that, I really had no expectations for how I wanted to look, which made it really easy because I'm happy with it, how it is. And um, like I said, depending on the size, I, I could calculate it, but I didn't. Um, depending on the size of how it feels, I think it's going to end up being like a small lap throw. I think it's a little bit big for a baby quilt, especially because I want to add thick borders, I think. But uh, I think it's going to turn out really nice. And it was really, really easy. I mean, all I did was giant four at a time flying geese with a layer cake, which is just so nice because I had that layer cake sitting around and it was just so nice to be able to use it. And if you remember in the other video, I showed um, a bunch of those low volumes that I thought I would use. I had a stack of fat quarters and then I had a bolt of an old um, Lella Boutique fabric. And this, this layer cake is Lella Boutique. And this is what the bolt looked like. And I actually decided I didn't use any of those fat, the low volume fat quarters. All I did was I, I mostly use from the layer cake because like, for example, here I pat, I pieced, both of these are from it. So in the beginning, I didn't know if I wanted to do like all dark in the center, light on the outside. That's why I had those fat quarters. But as I started going, I like the look of having a lot of them with the two different colors. So I did cut uh, probably, let's see, six blocks worth of this white print and that um that would make that'll make 24 geese since it's four at a time uh but otherwise i pulled directly from the layer cake 
And if the layer cake had, this one didn't have many light fabrics, if it had more, I probably wouldn't have needed to pull from anywhere else anyway. So it really does depend on like what your layer cake has. And I got asked in the comments the other day, like remember how, I don't know if you saw the other video, you'll know um, what I'm talking about, but I was like a little bit short on a few of my geese, like less than an eighth of an inch, which doesn't matter because the seam, it, the seam allowance is a quarter of an inch. Um, but someone said to me like, how are you gonna know that that's the one you messed up on when you're putting it together. Like, what do you do to mark that block? And I actually don't do anything. Now, someone did reply to that person and they said, Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop, Kimberly Jolly, she marks the one that she messed up on with a pin so she knows where it is. I don't, but look at this. This is one of them. I'm gonna bring you close so you can see it. When I lay this uh, white one out on top of the one below. See how it's all not matching perfectly, specifically on the top right and the top left, a tiny, tiny bit across the bottom. I knew as soon as I laid this down, it didn't seem quite right. So upon further inspection, I know that this is one of those ones that was short a little bit. And it really doesn't matter to me. I mean, an eighth of an inch is very small. So even if I didn't catch it when I was here, an eighth of an inch, like I feel like I could sufficiently, when I'm joining these rows later, like tug this apart to allow for that eighth of an inch and make them fit. But since I laid it on and I know it's not right, I can just account for that a little bit by leaving that sticking out here. And that will help correct my error so that then when I go to sew these rows together, uh, it should be fine. But again, an eighth of an inch is very small. And I find that by like a little bit of tugging, a little bit of, you know, manipulating the fabric, you can like work that in anyway. I have two more rows to add here. And this is, this is, I mean, these geese are huge. So this is so quick. I've just finished the last row, sewing the last row on, and let me show you what it looks like now. Everything's just kind of hooked in place here, so it's a good point to stop if you need to stop. It'll stay just like this, and nothing will be moved out of the spot that you wanted it in. Uh, and if you did want to start, then you can just fold. What I'll do is I'll just fold these two together, and I'll start sewing. And then I'll just repeat that all the way down. And I kind of have it all propped here to my left. And I'm going to take the first two rows, just fold the one on top of the other. And then for this, I'm just going to choose a direction. So I think I'm going to push the seams on this one toward me. And then basically what I'll do is I will rotate that. So this row will be toward me. Next row will be away from me. And I will just keep repeating. And once I get to this seam that I'm holding with my finger, I'll stop and I'll readjust. Uh, especially in the beginning, this is like kind of slippery because I have this whole quilt top over here. Uh, so it does need to be like adjusted a lot, kind of after every single one. Um, sometimes I tuck a little bit of it underneath this table because otherwise if it draped off the edge, it would be pulling a lot. So that kind of eliminates the pulling. And then I will just match the next seam here and align everything up and then start sewing. Something I wanna show you, so on this one, I can't show it because it's going the other way, but on this one, I can, and it's helpful because I can lift it up towards you now. Uh, so if you can see, we have two threads, one right here and one right here, and they cross. The point where they cross is the point of the flying geese on the front. So if you're looking at it from this way and you're sewing, you need to make sure that you don't sew over that point where they cross. If you do sew over it, then on the front side, the point of your flying geese will be cut off. So if you are struggling with cutting the points of your flying geese off, if you want to arrange the block so that when they go under your sewing machine that you see this side of it, You'll be able to watch your needle as you sew across here and make sure you're not going over that intersection of threads. Now I just finished this first row and we can come back and open it up and take a look. And you can see 
this points okay now I do think you're gonna get some variation in your points it depends how accurate your geese is sewn together so that one's good this one's good but you can see I have a little bit extra space here that I don't have on the other ones that's probably because I somewhere made a mistake either this seam allowance was a little bit bigger than a quarter of an inch which I kind of doubt more likely I didn't have it perfectly lined up on here and you can kind of see this like little yellow edge here that if I pulled this down a little more and got it even it would have been closer but like I'm good with this I'm, I'm, I'm okay this one's okay and so is this one and so is this one. So uh, if you wanna check, if you're struggling and you wanna check row by row, you can always unpick it and then just make sure when you're sewing that your seam is below that intersection. So here is the intersection. My thread's right below it. That means that when I open this up, my point is gonna be good. And I'm just gonna keep going now and just keep sewing the rows. So I finished putting this together. You can get a little peek at it here. You can't see the whole thing. But I like how it turned out. The size is interesting. It's a little bit wider than it is long. So it's 48 inches long and 56 inches wide. Um, it looks roughly like a square when you look at it on the ground. Let me show it to you. So it looks square-ish. It actually doesn't really look wider than it is long. The geese must give some kind of illusion to make it look close to square even though it's off by eight inches uh so i'm just kind of deciding what to do if i added another set of four that would be too long i think then it would be 56 by 64 it'd be 64 inches long um and i'm kind of not wanting that so i think what i might do uh, i don't really know yet so i've got to think on this a little bit then well, that wraps it up for today. I kind of got to figure out what I want to do with this. If I want to add more geese to the bottom to make it longer, or if I just want to put a border on and have it be whatever size it is. I'm going to think on it overnight, and I'll see you back here soon. Thanks for following along.